Hello, today I'll be talking about basics of fire hose. I'm kind of breaking this chapter into two parts. This one is going to be about standard, you know, how the hose is made, jacket types, types of fire hose, some valves, that kind of thing. And then when it warms up outside, when it's nice out, we'll go over hose rolls and hose bed loads, that kind of thing, with actual truck and hose because it's a little easier to kind of do it show it that kind of thing versus sitting here showing pictures now with that out of the way basic construction and uses so smooth liner with a durable jacket that is the basic your standard you know fabric fire hose fabric coated fire hose like Cross lays, attack hose, that kind of thing, which we'll get to the attack supply shortly. But that's, you know, a fabric, one or two layer coating with a rubber liner inside the water goes through. So it's two main pieces. Kind of like I alluded to, single versus double jacket. All that is, is, is there one layer of the fiber around that liner, or is there two? Rubber hose. Just as it sounds like, I'll have a picture of these in a minute. But instead of having that fabric coating, it's just one piece of rubber that makes up the outside and the inside. So there is no individual liner with those, just rubber hose. And then non collapsible. This is like your supply hard suction of a big long hard suction tubes that you know, strap up to the top of the engine kind of thing where you can't really fold it, it's it's rigid. And then supply hose, what it sounds like, those are usually pretty large diameter, you know, your four, five, six inch sized hoses for getting a lot of water from, you know, the hydrant to the truck or from the truck to the other truck, that kind of thing. Attack hoses, those are your inch and three quarter, two and a half, stuff you or a couple of firefighters drag around and actually put nozzles on the end of and spray water with. Suction hose is what it sounds like. That's for, you know, rural departments where they suck water out of the pond or a dry hydrant or out of a river. That's what they use. That's that rigid, non-collapsible hose. And then booster hose. That's like the stuff you find on a big reel on a brush truck. Kind of like garden hose. It looks like big garden hose. And so some examples here. My little mouse pointer. This right in the center is that non-collapsible hard suction. It's rigid so you can pull water up. Think of like a big straw. You're sucking, pulling water up from a source into an engine. If you try to do that with these, they'll just suck down flat and you're not going to get anything. Up here, this is your standard, you know, double jacket, rubber liner, fire hose. This is your inch and three quarter, two and a half, attack hose. That's the standard thing that we're all familiar with. This guy down here at the bottom, this is forestry hose. This doesn't have a rubber liner. It's just, you know, cotton jacket or synthetic jacket, whatever they make it out of. And the whole purpose of this is... Without the liner, this leaks a little bit. Now, it's not you know, spraying out of here, but when you use it, you know, it gets wet. The outside gets some water on it that keeps it from, you know, burning. If you're dragging it through, you know, a burning field somewhere, it keeps it from scorching, that kind of thing. This is an example of just rubber fire hose. Obviously, it's quick connect. That's We're not going over couplings right now, so don't worry about it. Those look weird. We're focused on this guy. These are used a lot for like bumper like trash lines on the front of an engine, that kind of thing. Because when you're, you know, fighting a fire with a bumper line, you know, in an alley somewhere, there's glass or needles or sharp bits of metal and just stuff that would get stuck in the cotton jacket on here or the getting the threads in here and get stuck to it. 
versus rubber, nothing's really going to, like, st stick in it, if you will. If you poke it, yeah, something might get stuck in there, but there's less risk of picking something up, dragging it across the ground. And this is booster line. This is a lot, really, mostly found on brush trucks now. Older fire engines, you'd see one or two of these on them. This was real popular, but now it's more or less just a wild land brush truck kind of thing. Size and length. It's measured by the interior diameter of the hose. So if you have inch and three quarter hose, when it's full of water, the inside diameter of that plastic jacket, or rubber lining is inch and three quarter, or two and a half, or three inch, or with supply line, it's six inches in diameter in the middle, that kind of thing. Couplings are kind of weird. So like inch and a half hose, an inch and three quarter hose, uses the same coupling. It's just the hose is a little bit bigger in the inside. Which is why, you know, things to consider. 50 feet and 100 feet are your, are your pretty standard, you know, get it from the factory links for most things. You get LDH, like, like sitting on the back of the truck here. Common is pretty 100 feet. Don't see a lot of 50 feet of those. We'll get to that. There's a reason why there's the 15 feet at the bottom of the screen, but we'll get there. But usually, 100 feet if it's going, you know, on the back of the truck for supply line, that kind of thing. And um, 50, pretty common for your standard, you know, 2.5 inch and 3 quarter fire hose, booster line, 50s are common. Those are pretty common at 100 don't really see a lot of 100 foot for regular like attack hose, but it's out there. You can get it that length. It's just preference. Hard suction, 10 feet. I have seen little tiny shorter ones. Those are usually made in-house with like a, a section failed on a fire and they cut, you know, a foot off the end. And now it's a usable 9 foot long hard suction. That kind of thing happens. Throughout service life, that'll happen with, you know, regular fire hose, LEH. You'll see, you know, a little short, short stubby section because a piece failed in the middle, you know, 50 feet down the length of the 100-foot one, and they just decide, eh, we'll cut it here, put a coupling on, now we've got a little short piece. That kind of stuff happens. But get much longer than 10 foot on a hard suction, kind of run out of places to put it because you can't fold it, you can't roll it. It's just, it is what it is. And then the 15 foot minimum for soft sleeve. You can get like this hose here and 15 minimum up. So I've seen 20, 25, pretty common, 50. And the reason they go down to that minimum is because like this little short roll here, it, it might be 50. Yeah. Looks a little small to be 100, but if you get. The little 25 foot ones, those are the ones you find, you know, the bumper for a supply line to the hydrant or in the little sitting on the step next to the pump to connect to the hydrant. That's why they use the little short ones because you don't need 100 feet to go from the truck to the hydrant. You need 20, 25 feet. Couplings. Three main types. Cast couplings. They're the weakest. They're found on occupant use hose. That they'll break if you try to read, rethread stuff onto them. Those are ones where, in the factory, they have the little mold, and they put the metal in it, the liquid metal into it, and then it solidifies, and they break it out of the mold. And there's your fire hose coupling. It could have little pops, crack little holes, gaps, air bubbles in it, that kind of thing. But it's cheap, and for like the little cheap building, you know, fire station, air quotes, that you've seen like a stairway with a little length of hose hanging there and a little nozzle, that's what that stuff is used for. Extruded, low weight and high strength, usually made out of aluminum. That's what Pretty much everything you're going to find nowadays is more or less. It's this stuff over here. 
They have a big mold. They shove metal through the mold while it's solid, and they you know cut it and form it, do that kind of thing. But this is your standard you no know, attack hose. It's what you're gonna when you probably order hose for a new truck. That's what's gonna be, and then drop forged. Strongest. It's also expensive, and it's pretty heavy because these are made out of brass. Where you know they have a big machine hammer that comes down, and smashes it, and that's how they build these. Make them in the factory. You, you can still get these. You can order fire hose right now online with this style or this style. But again, it's a cost thing. You know, twenty bucks versus ten bucks kind of thing, or you know, pretty heavy versus you know nice and light. So you can do it. You know, one of those department preference things. Continued couplings. Threaded versus non-threaded. Everything here is threaded, obviously, because it's got the threads. Self-explanatory. Non-threaded, self-explanatory. Doesn't use threads to connect hoses. Higby cut and indicator. To keep from cross-threading fire hose, they have a special cut. Which is, you know, right there, that special, you know, angle. Because the thread doesn't just end, it's tapered. That's so you can't cross-thread. That's the Higby cut. And the Higby indicator is, if you look, right here on this lug right here, there's like a notch in it, right in the middle. That indicator is in line with the little cut. And both, you know, this end, the swivel end that threads on to this end of the hose, will also have one, so... You can look at them, line those two lines up, and connect your hose. It's all lined up on the inside. Lugs. That Higby cut on that hose I just showed you was on the lug. That's the part you put the wrench to twist and connect the hoses and provides a place to put the wrench to tighten, loosen that kind of thing. There are different forms of lugs. There's pin lugs which are like this, look like little pins. Rocker lugs, those are the common ones. Those are like the ones I just showed you where it's, you know, the whole length of the hose coupling. Put a wrench on there, everyone's happy. And then recessed lugs, that's like, that's pretty much always a booster line thing. Just looks like lugs, but inverted. So there's little holes drilled in the lugs and you put a little wrench with a lug on there. And that's how you tighten those down. Stores and quarter turn. Stores are these ones up here. These are the ones on your you know, 6 inch rubber LDH. You have two lugs that are here, two recesses here. If you were to connect two of these, you put the lugs in here, you twist them, there's little latches, they click to show that it's locked and you're connected. Quarter turn. That's these. They're kind of like this. But they have these hooks, and you just put the hooks in these little recesses, turn them until they stop, and you're connected. These usually don't have locks. They just twist them and hope they stay where they're supposed to stay kind of thing. Causes of fire hose damage. Mechanical, thermal, organic, chemical, corrosion, and age. So, mechanical. That is like dragging your fire hose, you know, across the street, down, you know, across concrete, and it's rubbing on it and wearing at the edges, or someone, it gets a slash from a piece of glass in it, or that kind of thing. Something's physically, you know, damaging wearing on the hose, it's rubbing over an edge, that kind of thing. Thermal, either heat or cold. Fire hose freezes solid, it's probably going to get damaged. It's going to get damaged. It's sitting on something really hot, there's no water in it, it gets toasted like that, thermal damage. It's going to have to get fixed. There's some there, but real right there, yeah, pretty toasted. Organic, that's more of a cotton fire hose thing, now that there's synthetic jacketing and stuff. But that's like mold growing on it. Old fire hose, if it wasn't dry when it was rolled up or reloaded, it'll 
get musty, moldy, that kind of thing. New stuff. You can put it away damp and it'll be okay. Not soaking wet, but a lot more water friendly than old fire hose. Chemical is what it sounds like. You're on a car fire and gasoline gets over the hose and it deteriorates the hose or bleach or, you know, whatever. A lot of stuff out there. Fire hose gets dragged through a lot. That kind of thing. Corrosion. That is for, like, the brass couplings we were talking about earlier. They're old. They turn green. They get oxidized. That kind of thing. Not really going to destroy the fire hose. That's more of a surface thing, but it's, you know, still damaging over time. And then fire hose age. If you load fire hose into the bed of the truck, you know, flat lay or whatever lay you choose, and it sits there and you don't have a, you don't pull that hose line for a year, or it's on you know, the spare truck and it doesn't get used to the forestry line and you haven't touched it in a year and a half, that hose is laying there in one position the whole time. And so where the hose bends or folds over, that can, you know, crack the line or it gets, you know, cracks in the rubber and that kind of thing. You know, at least every six months, even if you don't use it, just pull it down, reposition it, pack it in a different way, just kind of keep everything from getting all worn out and folded over and falling apart at the edges kind of thing. Care and maintenance. Obviously inspect it after use. It's easy to do that. When you use it, you're walking it out to roll it up. Give it the once over, make sure there's no big tears in it or big burn marks in it, that kind of thing. Clean when necessary. If there's, you know, dirt on there, you drag drug it through a dirt road, sweep it off, sweep the gravel off with it with a broom when you get back. You can wash it. There's gear washers out there. A lot of places will either have one of those or they just have a brush and mild you know dish detergent rinse it down soap it up give it a light scrub that kind of thing now all the fire to fire hose manufacturers will say you know only use this specific detergent follow the recommendations of who built it but usually they say you know use a mild you know dawn dish soap detergent nothing nothing harsh kind of thing Dry a hose before storing it. That'll prevent if you have older hose, that mold, mildew kind of thing. Store in a clean place if possible. You know, some places tight for space. You have to keep the hose in the bay with the fire trucks, but over time, you no know, exhaust, that kind of thing. Oil grit, just day to day station life can affect it versus if it's, you know, tucked away in its own little place where stays cleaner, isn't exposed to exhaust, that kind of thing. It's always better for it, but you do what you can. And then, obviously, nice, nice rolls. Keep everything rolled up nice and couplings out of the way so they're not getting kicked or banging into things. And if you still have that real cotton jacket older fire hose, loosely pack it so it can get air circulation, kind of stave off that mold, mildew over time kind of thing. Hose appliances. Valves. Ball valves, gate valves, butterfly valves, and clapper valves. Now, ball valve. It's exactly what it sounds like. This is like in your, your nozzles, your valves like this style, pumps and fire trucks when you, you, know, you open the two and a half discharge. It's probably going to be a ball valve. All that is is literally just a ball right in here. And when it's closed, it's solid, and when you open it, there's a hole in the, the valve, and that lets water through. Gate valve, that's like these. You know, usually I've seen them used for connecting to a hydrant. You want a little way to drain water out of the system when you're done, throw one of these on there. All that is is a little plate in here. When it's closed, water can't get through. You turn the little crank, the plate rides up, and now water can get through. Butterfly valve, kind of similar to the gate valve with the plate in here. But instead of, you know, rising up when you open it, this is 
this rotates 90 degrees so if it's closed it'll be across you know if it's open it'll be you know like a knife edge so water can get around it and you can tell with the handle because usually they're usually designed probably standard even where if the handle here is parallel in line with the pipe it's open and when it's like looking if you look down from above like a t where this is going this way and this is coming across this way it's closed like this one if it, it's either open or partially open because you can kind of see this is turned a little bit in there and it's not you know straight this way or straight that way and then clapper valve those don't have a physical you know way to open it you don't turn a handle you don't you know pull a lever all those are are a little flat piece of metal in here see the arrows so when water let's say it's coming from this way the force of the water pushes the little flapper valve in here this way it blocks it so it can't you know come around and go this way it comes in forces the plate over and comes this way same thing on this side comes in forces the plate over comes out and if you use both it balances out it pushes the water from this way and this way so it's just kind of hanging out here in the middle and the water comes in from both directions more ty types of valves valves that you see not you know how they open how they close but more what they do gated Y's technically they're Y's but usually you know, gated Y they divide one hose into multiple so that's like you know down here you know two and a half coming in and then you break off into two inch and three quarters that's how you know I see these used for like longer attack lines where you don't want to drag a whole bunch of inch and three quarters out you drag one two and a half out get to a suitable point and then put you know one or two inch and three quarters off of there and a little bit easier a little bit more cleanup friendly kind of thing Siamese multiple lines into one these are the ones that can be confusing because they look the same they kind of almost do the same thing but the opposite so instead of one coming in and splitting into two it's two coming in here and splitting into one big one. It's the difference between those two. And so like on this one, this is two ball valves. This is a flapper valve. LDH appliances, a water thief and manifold. Water thief, that's this guy up here. At a glance, it looks like just a whole bunch of these. But on this one, a hose comes in, stops, and splits off this one. Big hose comes in, goes through here, and big hose continues. But it's got these, so you know you're running water this way, and you connect the hose here, open this, you steal a little bit off. Water's still going this way, but you're taking a little bit off of it while it goes past. And manifold, that'd be like having three or four of these all in one unit attached to the end of a big supply hose, like we've connected this. So that's, you know, there's a thousand feet of LDH and they put a manifold at the end and run like five inch and three quarters off kind of thing. And then hydrant valves. Hydrant valves are designed to kind of specifically work with hydrants. They can boost the pressure coming out. They can maintain pressure, reduce pressure going to the engine. There's some that are like this where they have one big you know supply line coming off to go to the engine but they'll have one of these on there in case someone else wants to come in and take a little bit off kind of thing but they're hydrant valves because they're kind of designed to go on a hydrant and do some specific function fittings and strainers there well the book says there's two but it's kind of like three the book says there's adapters and reduces which is great, but they also say, oh, and there's these other things. So other is kind of like an unofficial category. Adapters are for taking one style of thread or connection and connecting to the other. So like if you have National Standard Thread, NST, and then another type of thread that won't line up, 
they make adapters for them. They're like this guy, you know, big five inch threaded supply line to stores, that kind of thing. Or another common one is like double females. Well, they'll have this end also over here. So if you have something weird happens and you have two male ends of a hose to connect, you can throw one of those in there. That kind of thing. Reducers, those are going from big diameter to low diameter. So like this right here. Like two and a half comes in, inch and three quarter comes out. That's all those are. And then others. Those are like your caps for like discharges on the engine or the little plastic caps on like sprinkler systems and standpipe connections, that kind of thing. Just whatever doesn't meet, you know, these two categories. Strainers. Strainers are for, you know, your rural fire departments where you have to take water out of a pond or a stream kind of thing or you're sucking water out of a port tank and to keep, you know, dirt and grit and sea life or fish or weeds getting into your truck and your pump, you throw a strainer on the end so you're not sucking all that in. Floating and non-floating. Down here with these tanks on it, that's a floating one. You connect your hard suction onto it, put it out in the pond, and it just kind of floats around and sucks water off the top. I've seen these used a lot for, like, real silty, muddy ponds or with a lot of algae in them where... If you put, you know, one of these in there, or, you know, another style that sits on the bottom, you'd be sucking nothing but mud or grit or debris, so this floats around and kind of takes off the top. These, with this, especially with this flat bottom, this one is more designed for a porter tank where you want to be able to suck the most amount of water out of it that you can. So these are, you know, low profiles, you know, sucking water you know, down to here instead of if you were to use like a barrel strainer like this thing where, you know, the minimum amount of water you can suck is like, you know, up here. And so they make barrel strainers like this that don't float. All that is is none of this red stuff is up here. It's just a big tube looking thing with holes in it. And then there's like these, like I said earlier, the low profile ported tank style ones. Hose tools. Hose roller, jacket, clamp, spanner, wrench, and mallet. So, hose rollers. That's this guy here. Usually there'd be another one connected to it with these little clips. But this is for, like, you're going up and over the edge of a building or a ledge somewhere. And you don't want to drag the fire hose across that sharp edge because that's, you know, that mechanical wear, that mechanical damage. So you put one of these on there and it has a nice, you know, easy roll, nice gradual curve to negotiate instead of sharp edge. Hose jacket. It's this. Those are for... You're using a hose, a two and a half, let's say. And you notice there's a little leak in it. There's some water coming out of it. And you want to replace it but you, you want to try and keep it going a little bit longer before you know you can shut down and replace it or what have you. You can throw this on there, clamp it down, and that keeps the leak in check so it's not you know spraying out. These, I think I've seen one once in my life, and that was like a surplus auction that I bought it through. These are kind of going away just because you know the hose is still damaged in here and. If you can, just reposition, change out hose lengths when you, as soon as you can, that kind of thing. I'm sure they're still out there. I'm sure they still get used, but, you know, going away kind of thing. Hose clamps. Does what it sounds. Hose goes through here. When you, This is all the way unscrewed. Hose can get water through it. And then when you... You want to shut the hose down. Let's say you want to lengthen it or change a piece out, that kind of thing. Twist this down, cuts off the water supply, and then you can go change your hose or do whatever you're going to do. These, again, kind of like these guys, are going away. Again, I'm sure they're out there. I'm sure 
they pro might still get used, but this is one of those, I mean, things where you're kind of not, well, yeah, I guess dangerous, but it's just one of those things where, get back here, things where if you don't have to use it, why use it kind of things. Because if you use it, now you got to put it into place. If you can't unlatch this, you kind of got to pre plan. And I'm running my hose out. I got to throw the clamp in there and then continue running my hose. Or Because if this is around like a big six inch supply hose, when it's charged, you can't, you know, lift it and throw this around it. You kind of have to put this on it when you're running it out kind of thing. There's some planning that goes into these. And even then. When you're tightening these down or going to loosen them, these can, you know, the water pressure can cause these to, like, sp spool out and, you know, wacky in the knees. Or, But there's lever ones, the lever to come up and hit you, so they're just one well, of those why kind of deals. Spanner and wrench. Up here, these two on the ends are spanners. These are the ones, you know, have the, some of them will have the little, you know, gas meter slot in them. These are simpler ones where they got the little hook on the end and you can just like this and they're for connecting, you know, two and a halfs, tightening down, you know, tack lines kind of thing. And then wrenches, that's what these guys are, like in the middle. They also have the little spanner wrench hook to tighten the loosen hose, but they also have an adjustable wrench right here to open, you know, hydrants. You unscrew it. Place it on the not on the top of the hydrant, tighten it down, and then you can open and close the hydrant. And then mallets. Don't have a picture of a mallet because let's be honest, all it is is your standard hardware hardware store rubber mallet with the sand in it or whatever. The dead blow hammers where sometimes something's really stuck somewhere and you got to beat on a little bit to loosen it or get it real tight, like hard suction. You got to really tighten them down to get that complete vacuum, that complete seal. So hit it with a hammer kind of thing. Hose tools continued. Bridges are these guys here. That's what it sounds. Hose goes under it. And so, you know, cars can keep driving over it and not drive over the hose, damaging it, crushing it, that kind of thing. I've never seen them around here. They work cool, but, I mean, that's a lot of stuff to have to carry on a truck somewhere. At least to me. Chafing block. Could not find a picture of one of these. But, that is for, let's say, you're getting water out of a hydrant. Let, this isn't a hydrant, obviously, but let's say your inlet is like right here. And, you know, here's the ground. Well, if you're using, you know, 6 inch, it comes out and it's real heavy. So it comes down, hits the ground, and comes out. And you get this, like, real bad kink in here. Chafing blocks, that's just to give it a little support to kind of keep, you know, kinks out. Keep it from rubbing on the ground or a weird angle. So a block or even another roll of hose just tucked under it to kind of keep it from sharp angles or rubbing up against stuff. Just more natural, less damaging angles and... Kind of keep the weight off the end of the coupling. More natural flow kind of thing. Hose straps. They're for controlling hose lines. Like this one. Be usable for like a ladder. Where you wrap this around the hose. Put the hook through the ring. So it tightens down on the hose. And then you hook the hook onto the rung of a ladder. So instead of you having to hold the hose up and spray water, if you're spraying water off a ladder or running, you know, hose up a ladder, you can wrap the strap around it and then hook the strap with the hose on it to the ladder and you can spray it at your leisure because all the weight is now on the ladder instead of you holding it up while you're spraying the water. Or some people have, you know, lengths of webbing with a loop in it so they can wrap it around the hose, throw it over the shoulder, you know, they can kind of hold the weight of the hose with their whole body instead of trying to manage with just their arms and tiring themselves out kind of thing. All for comfort and control. 
and then loading rollers. What it sounds like. There's powered ones, there's like there's ones where you kind of wheel around along the ground, kind of both walking the water out of the hose and rolling up at the same time. There's like these bumper mounted ones that are powered or you know unpowered with a hand crank. All they do is you know roll up the hose and then you can feed it up off the roller and reload it into the hose bed and you're not you know hand unrolling it or rolling it out on the ground and dragging it across the ground. Now, word of advice: when a fire test, when a you know a fire one test or official test says what's a hose roller or what's a roller in regards to fire hose probably looking for this thing this is more what they're looking for so if you, there's two answers and one is a device for protecting hose as it goes over the a sharp edge or ledge or a device for rolling up fire hose this is probably the safer answer to go with because I was, I personally have been burned on that kind of question. So usually this is what they're looking for: hose roller, not this. There. Hopefully that was short, sweet, to the point, as opposed to other ones I've done. Cough, cough. Suppression systems. But that's also only half the chapter. There's also you know hose rolls and then like hose bed loads that kind of thing. Those are going to come when it's nice out and I can get some fire hose out and a fire engine out and actually do them and show what they look like when it's all said and done. So, thank you for watching.